If you're asked to find the average velocity or average speed, you need to find the displacement and distance traveled. One tip to simplify your solution from the beginning is to check whether V will or will not be equal to zero during delta T given in the problem. If V is not equal to zero during that time, then we don't have any turning points, which means there is no change in the direction of motion and the particle moves from start to finish in only one direction. In this case, the displacement is equal to the distance traveled. Let's say that you're given a velocity function and you're asked to find the distance traveled after some time. Before doing anything, you will ask yourself a very simple question. Is V going to be equal to zero at any time during the motion? If yes, you will find the times when V equals to zero and then integrate the velocity equation to find the position equation is of T. Pay attention to the initial position and initial time, which is usually equals to zero as they will be given to you in the question. Once we get S of T, we can find the displacement and distance traveled as we discussed before. On the other hand, if S of T is given in the problem and you are required to find the displacement and distance traveled, then you first check for the V equals to zero condition by taking the derivative of S of T, and after doing the check, you come back to S of T to calculate the displacement and total distance, exactly as we did in the lecture. Note that in this case, the initial conditions are found directly from substituting T equals to zero in S of T to find S naught. If instead, the function given in the question is A of T, the acceleration, you need to integrate A of t to find V of t and follow exactly the same process as before. In this case, all initial conditions V naught, T naught, and S naught should be given to you in the problem.